Today we're talking about whether or not it's worth picking up the Fujifilm X100F in 2019. So I personally was curious about buying one of these cameras for my personal use, and so I asked B&H if they would be willing to let me loan this camera for a period of time, and they were kind enough to let me borrow it for this review. So if you're interested in picking up this camera, we've provided a link below in the description for your buying purchasing needs. This camera came out in February of 2017, which means this camera is well over two years old and is totally due for an update. In fact, the Fuji rumors are stating that this camera is ready to be updated hopefully this year with the Fujifilm X100V. Even with the update around the corner, I think it's worth picking this camera up because you can get them now secondhand for a pretty decent price at around $700 compared to what they are brand new at around $1,200. Anyways, with all that being said, let's see what's packing inside of this tiny little pocket camera. Well, it's not really a pocket camera. Kind of stick it in your pocket. Inside the X100F, we have a 24.3 megapixel APS-C X-Trans CMOS 3 sensor. This is the same sensor that we see in the X-H1, the X-T2, the X-Pro2, and several other Fuji cameras. It's got a fixed 23 millimeter lens, which is roughly the equivalent of a 35 millimeter on a full frame body, with an F2.0 aperture. It's got a hybrid optical and electronic viewfinder, a three inch 1.04 million dot LCD monitor, which is not a touch display by the way full HD 1080p video recording up to 60 frames per second a 91 point AF with 49 phase detect autofocus points extended ISO range of 51,200 with a maximum burst rate of 8 frames per second in the mechanical shutter mode so all those specs are fine and dandy they're a little outdated because again this camera came out in 2017 but what makes this camera so special is the actual handling and use of it and it's something that I was curious about because I've never used one of these before. I've seen so many people talk so highly of the X100 series in the past, and I just never had an opportunity to use it in an everyday scenario. Because this lens is fixed to this body, you can never take the lens off giving you only one lens that you can use ever. And there are some modes here where you can zoom the lens and it actually will crop in at a 50 millimeter and a 75 millimeter equivalent. So it's kind of neat. You can also buy a telephoto adapter or a wide angle adapter, but really it's all about using just this, this one lens, this one body, this small lightweight design and having it around your neck. It's kind of like a piece of art, isn't it? Isn't that nice? Just like, it's so fashionable. Just leave it there right on my, Fupa. There's just something kind of zen-like about this camera. It's simple, it's easy to use, the dials are nice and clicky, the handling is pretty good. It's a little small. I would not really compare this to the Ryko GR, how do you say it, Rico? Ryko? Is it Rico? Rico. I don't even know how to say it. I think it's Rico. But I really would not compare this to the Ryko. Dad. It. This lens is completely different. This is a 35 millimeter versus a 28 millimeter equivalent. We also have an optical hybrid viewfinder, which I really like and I want to talk about. I've also got a little nipple here or a little joystick as, uh, as you would say, which I really prefer over obviously having just a D-pad on the Raikou. The new Raikou Rico, it, has a touch screen on it, which is really nice. I wish this had a touch screen. I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but basically this is not something that I would truly compare to the Rico GR because those are so different cameras. This is really like a mini Leica or a poor man's Leica, which I really like a like. I like a lot. Which I like a lot. So let's talk about some of the handling of this camera and why I have really enjoyed using it in my everyday life. First off, the buttons. The clicky buttons are fantastic. Everything about this camera is tactile and it's easy to use if you're used to these kind of mechanical dials, which I really like. The shutter dial here is totally selectable all the way up to 4,000th of a second. You can also change your ISO by pulling up this little thing here. It's really kind of hard to do. I don't really like that. I wish they came up with a better way to change your ISO because that is a little fiddly and I'm not a huge fan of the way that works. It's clever and it's an interesting way to do it, but it would have been nice to maybe, I don't know, put it somewhere else. The aperture ring is also really nice. I like having an adjustable aperture ring on the outside. That's perfect. I wouldn't change anything about that. And the camera has a built-in ND filter, which I really love. So let's talk about the hybrid viewfinder, which I find to be really interesting and different. In some ways, it's a terrible viewfinder in other ways it's great the EVF quality is unfortunately not very good uh, it's 
pretty low resolution. And especially in 2019, when you've got cameras like the X-T3 here or the Nikon Z6, which we're shooting on right now, those EVFs are just incredible. There's almost no lag and the sharpness and resolution, the color, everything just looks great. And using the digital EVF of this camera is kind of depressing because it's really not very good. But if you just set that aside and forgive it as a 2017 camera, it's totally fine and completely acceptable because when you actually look at the images that this camera takes on a computer, I've always been impressed with the image quality and that's something that I've always seen in Fujifilm cameras. But if that EVF is still really bad and you just can't deal with it, there is an optical viewfinder mode. Essentially what it is, is a hole right here on the side of the camera. In fact, when I look through here right now, I can actually see the lens through this. This is not using a mirror or anything and going out the lens because this is a mirrorless camera. So the only way to see what the lens is seeing is by using an EVF, which you have the ability to do. But in this optical mode, which is really fascinating, I'm actually able to see frame lines of what my image is going to be because the math of where this optical viewfinder is to the lens in proximity is able to kind of guesstimate where the frame is going to be. There's a built-in flash right here on the front. It's kind of cute, it's there. It's not something you're gonna really use very often. It kind of makes the camera look cool. It's something you can use in a pinch, but I wouldn't really recommend it. In fact, I got some images where you could see the shadow of the lens because it's so close to the lens. So it's not super usable, it's not super practical. So I suggest using the LightPix Flash Q, which is what I used on this camera. If it's just super small, it goes right on the hot shoe. And you have a detachable flash. You can point it in any direction. You got little gels you can use for colors. I really enjoyed using that flash with this camera and it's kind of a match made in heaven because they're both so small and compact. I really like how on the side of the camera here is your selection for your autofocus. I find that to be a little bit better than the X-T2, X-T3 format of putting it on the front here. You've got manual focus, continuous focus, and single point autofocus. The continuous focus mode on this camera is decent. It's a little wonky, it's a little pulsate -y. So I found myself using the single autofocus point the most and it's the most useful. Just having a center autofocus point or I can use the joystick and move that point around and get my focus, lock it, and then take the picture. The battery life of the X100F is totally fine, completely acceptable for an all day use. It can range between 200 shots and 400 shots depending on how you use the camera. On the side here we do have a mic input, however it is a mini mic input. It's not a full 1 8 inch input like a Rode video mic. So you do need to use a little dongle adapter, kind of annoying. We have a micro HDMI port and a USB micro. It's not USB-C, unfortunately. Again, remember 2017, this camera. It is interesting that they decided to put a mic input on this camera. I'm actually a little surprised that they did because the video on this is good enough for 1080p. The color looks great, of course, it's Fuji colors, but it's not something I would really recommend using. The autofocus is pretty terrible for video, so you're gonna wanna shoot manual focus. And so. Not a video camera, but it's there if you need it. I find the grip on this to be non-existent. It's very hard to hold it, to be completely honest. And there's a lot of accessories to help with that. You can get an extension grip made by Fuji, or you can buy any third-party extension grips, which I think would really help with the gripping of this camera. You can also get a thumbs up, which is kind of typical of Leica cameras. It goes into the hot shoe and it gives you a little thumb rest, which is nice. And because this camera's been around for a while, there's a whole bunch of amazing third-party options with this camera. This has the whole slew of picture profiles that we're used to with Fujifilm cameras, with the exception of Eterna and F-Log, which came with the X-T2, which was released after this camera was released. And there's really nothing much to say other than, of course, the colors just look amazing. My two favorite profiles are the classic chrome profile and the Acros black and white profile. Both of those are amazing, and I find I'm shooting JPEGs mostly on this camera. Again, I'm only taking pictures of my family and kind of just casual pictures, so I don't wanna deal with raw files and having amazing colors straight out of this camera with the JPEGs is super handy dandy, and again, it's small and lightweight, which I really love. This camera has a cult following. This is a very popular camera with a lot of photographers for a lot of reasons. It doesn't have the most amazing specs in the whole wide world, but the lens is great. It's got a great depth of field. It's small, it's lightweight, and it kind of has, again, this Zen-like use case where it's just everything you need in one small package that you can carry around with you, and heck, it looks so sexy. I mean, look how pretty it looks. It looks like a little Leica or a little film camera. You can just walk around with this and people are impressed by it. They're like, oh, nice camera. It happens a lot. I actually think this is just a really special 
niche kind of camera and it's fun to have it. And I really like using it, even though it's slow and the autofocus isn't the best and the EVF isn't very good. It, it just really comes down to the fact that it's a joy to use and the images that it creates are amazing. This is a great gateway camera for people who are wanting to get into photography and want to exercise using shallow depth of field and having something that's very practical and easy to carry around. This one lens is going to force you to learn how to compose properly and how to zoom with your feet rather than with a zoom. Plus you get a nice shallow depth of field with the f2 lens and the picture profiles and the sensor on this camera are really going to help you because I mean the pictures just look so good without even having to try. So having this camera as a beginner is a great way to start and as somebody who just wants to take pictures of their family this is a really sexy option rather than taking pictures with your phone. So let's cut to the chase. Is it worth buying this 2017 camera in 2019? I think buying it brand new at around $1,200 is a ripoff. It is totally not worth $1,200 brand new. But if you're able to pick up this camera secondhand on eBay or a more reputable company like B&H at around $800 and you're in the market for an all-in-one, small, compact, sexy, beautiful, amazing, artistic camera, then this can be for you and it's a great price point. What do you guys think of the X100F? Are you interested in it? Is it something that you want to pick up in 2019? Do you already have one and do you love it? Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this beautiful camera. Once again, I'm Dave May. This is a beautiful sexy camera and so is this one, but this one's probably a little bit sexier This one looks a little bit more practical and like workhorsey. You know what I mean? Workhorse. See you next time